Hey everyone, welcome back to another Brew Unity tutorial, and this time we're going to be showing you guys our newest feature on Brew and on the SDK called server-side purchase validation. Now I know what you will be thinking. You're going to be kind of thinking, well, we already have track and app purchase Google validation, but now we're going to give you guys the ability to get that purchase result and that validation payload back into your Unity code so you guys can do a little bit more checking to whether if this purchase that was made by the user is valid, and if it is, then give them their purchase item. If they're not, then say, nope, you were fake, and we cannot give you this item. So to just start off, we had this old code that we were using in our past uh, video for tracking in app purchases, and we're gonna be updating this. And as we are here, we're on the process purchase of where you guys are gonna be getting your um, purchase product metadata. And we already, you know, decoded all the JSON, you know, got each, you know, platform specific signatures or payloads, you know, currency code, product ID. But, you know, when we go to our Viper docs, we have changed some of our docs to say that we now do validation purchase and track with a validation callback. And it's newer since we just uh, added track purchase with extra receive validation with no callback. So this is our old code from what we can see here, track Google in app purchase event or track iOS in app purchase event. Same thing over here. This will still give you guys the ability to track it and validate it on the, uh, on, on the dashboard side. So you guys will not be able to get the payload back. So if you guys want to now get the payload back with a callback, just scroll back up here and you'll see a new thing called validate iOS in app purchase event and validate Google in app purchase event. So really all we need to do is just click on this, copy it, go back into our code, paste it in there, do the same thing for Google. And then to get rid of that error, we're gonna be passing in a new thing called purchase result data. And boom, there you guys go. You are now gonna be getting the purchase result data of this validation back into your code so you guys can do some more debugging on it to tell whether this user you know is a valid purchase so let's say you know purchase metadata is it valid so you you'll see that we have multiple parameters in multiple variables that we sent back called purchase processed. So what this will tell you is if it actually hit our servers to start processing. If it doesn't, if this is a false, that means it never actually hit our servers. And you guys probably there's something going on with your current code and you guys, you know, kind of need to send us something better. And then you'll see is valid. You'll see message and you'll see timestamp. Is valid will tell you if the purchase is a valid purchase. And if it's not, and it will do true false. Message will tell you why the purchase either you know, failed, but if it succeeded because it's, it is valid, it will say, oh, purchase is successful. Timestamp will give you the time of when the server validated the purchase. So you guys know that. Now let's head back into our code and let's kind of utilize these. Let's do if uh, purchase result is valid. See, get a callback purchase result. And then we'll know, we'll be like success it's valid, right? And if it isn't, then we might want to go further down. We might want to go further down and say, okay, uh, tell us why. Did it purchase? And we'll go and add, did the product purchase process? And then we'll go and check what was the message? Now this message may be telling you that the reason why I didn't, it did, maybe it did process, that means it hit our servers, but the message may be telling you that there's something going on with your current, uh, there's something maybe going on with your current keys. But hold on, before we go into that, let's first, let's copy all this, let's go do it for Android as well because this should be pulling up an error but since we're on the unity ios and unity it's only doing unity uh, ios code right now and if we switch back to android we would probably get a error that showed up here but we are going to fix that 
So now we have it, the right data, uh, the right validation code for Unity as well. But let's go back to the dashboard and let's show you guys that when you get a message that says the reason why that's happening is because it couldn't parse it or it couldn't uh, validate it because it just failed at validating, you guys might want to check back into your Byper settings to then go see, hey, what's my Google Play license key? Or since we have an iOS version, what's my Apple shared secret? You know, and you guys might want to go back and double check that your game is matching the same one in your Google Play dashboard as well as with your Apple dashboard to make sure that you guys are giving us the right Apple shared secret and the right Google Play license key. Just so let's hit compile on it. And there's no bugs. So we have fully integrated the new validation purchase payload for iOS and Google. You guys will be getting those purchase result data back. All right. I hope you guys liked this tutorial. Please, you know, like this video and subscribe to the Bipru channel.